welcome to all our faithful followers. We may be few for tonight, but as always, we are recording, so it will be accessible to all the wonderful teachers who are committed to learning more, but are totally exhausted post-COVID, post-winter, post-variants that are coming and going and them having to adjust to the local regulations. So welcome to our partner presentation. As you are probably aware, Montessori Europe has partnered with several organizations with whom we have a very strong synergy and very important links in sharing the message of the importance of valuing the child and role modeling appropriate behaviors, role modeling appropriate um, emotions and moral codes for young children, because it is at these times that they absorb them, internalize them, and they are set for life. And this is one of the reasons why we have jo joined in partnership with Think Equal. And we are delighted to have uh, with us tonight the program coordinator from Think Equal, Sasha Lawless, who will share some of the similarities and some of the connections between Montessori and the program. And she will explain to us how the program works. So welcome again, Sasha. And um, shall we go ahead and just start? Yes, absolutely. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you to Montessori for having me. And thank you to all of you for spending some of your evening listening to me speak about Think Equal. Um, as Barbara kindly introduced me, I'm Sasha Lawless. I'm the program coordinator for a global not-for-profit called Think Equal. And essentially our mission is um, empowering change through education, positive change through education in early years. Uh, as you'll see throughout this presentation, there are many, many links between Think Equal and Montessori. Some of these are pretty concrete ties, including the fact that Barbara Isaacs, president of Montessori Europe, is one of our founding patrons, trustees and experts that has helped us develop, um, develop Think Equal. But in general, you'll see that there are true ideological alignments between Think Equal and Montessori. Um, Montessori has really inform, um, helped inform Think Equal on what our approach is and how, um, how we've developed as a charity. And I think just to begin, there's one quote which I believe really encapsulates the synergy, and it comes from Maria Montessori herself. And this is that establishing peace is the work of education. We must convince the world of the need for universal collective effort to build the foundation for peace. And this was said, you probably will have heard this before, but this was said by Maria Montessori in 1936. But it, it really does continue to ring true and, and poignant in particularly today's current global context, really emphasizing the power and the crucial role that education plays in shaping our collected future. Um, and when you read this, I'm not sure about you, but for me, it draws really clear parallels um, to other influential thought leaders uh, from around the world, from throughout the times um, in the fields of education and human rights and peace activism. One of which, of course, is Mahatma Gandhi, who said, if we are to reach real peace in this world, we shall have to begin with the children. The next is, of course, Nelson Mandela who follows by saying that education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. And so it kind of seems that these are just a, hand, you know, a handful of many, many people throughout history who have um, mentioned and agreed um, and emphasized that education is this key. It unlocks all human potential and it really does shape the future of our world. But I think often the question that is amiss um, and not necessarily spoken of, Adam, at a kind of more common degree is what kind of education? The education system that we have right now is fit for a very certain purpose and not fit for the purpose and potentially stunts our ability to create this societal and national global peace that we're all uh, trying to reach towards. We very much focus on skill, skills such as numeracy and literacy, which are really important. Um, prepping youth to be effective workers and to succeed and thrive in, in the labor market. But I think that often we dismiss or undervalue the importance of human skills, skills of social and emotional learning, skills of 
um, ethical learning and um, skills that rest on social justice and mental health and well-being. And this is the kind of education that I believe, we believe that Maria Montessori, Mandela, Gandhi and countless other of these thought leaders have called for. And this is the education that Think Equal um, attempts to provide and, um, and offer. These are just, again, two of very many quotes um, talking about how moral education needs to be at the kind of fundamental crux of our education systems and that we need to teach people to love and not to hate um, because love comes more naturally to the human heart than its opposite. So this kind of leads on to Think Equals Mission. Um, we're a young, a young charity, but have I feel we've been kind of shown the way by these uh, centuries of, of thought leaders in these fields. Um, but essentially we're on a mission to achieve a global system change in early childhood education through social and emotional learning. And um, we talk about social and emotional learning throughout this presentation. I'm sure you've heard it thousands of times. I really mean it in the most holistic and comprehensive sense. Um, social and emotional learning is very broad and it covers a lot of ground. Um, and sometimes it can be used, you know, when just speaking about mindfulness or just speaking about um, kindness. But really when we're talking about it in this context, social and emotional learning is the human skills that makes us all um, good and positive, successful human beings from that sense. Um, the, the SEL, the social emotional learning that we speak of at Think Equal kind of rests on these three pillars. The pillars of well-being and mental health, psychosocial competencies and social justice. And through these, we teach 25 skills and competencies that helps lay the foundations, the positive foundations, both for individuals and for wider societies. Within the kind of essence of Think Equal and how Think Equal developed, we included three best practice examples in the field and I've listed them here below. We have the kindness curriculum from the Center of Healthy Minds, co-created by Professor Richard Davidson, the uh, neuroscientists along with the Dalai Lama. And we also have C learning curriculum, which is social, emotional and ethical learning, which was developed by Emory University, also co-created by the Dalai Lama. And then we have the ruler program, which was created by Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. And um, it's really a, a program for emotional literacy and emotional regulation. And that's embedded within our work as well. Um, this is just to give you a, a, an understanding of the range and, and the um, breadth in which the SEL is considered to be uh, used within the Think Equal program. And to emphasize as well that this is a collaborative effort. We are very pro um, collaboration at Think Equal, hence why we love partnering with um, Montessori and many other um, prominent and, and well-respected and amazing organizations. And this kind of leads on to this next slide, which looks at how and who the program was designed by. Um, we were designed by 22 global experts in the field of education, psychology, neuroscience and human rights. Um, and this was really to ensure that this program was rooted in evidence and experience. So you can see some of these are listed here. We have the brilliant Barbara Isaacs, President of Montessori Europe. We have the late Sir Ken Robinson, who was the world renowned educationalist, Dr. Rivashi Sani, expert in gender equality, uh, Dr. Mark Brackett and Dr. Robin Stern, the co-directors uh, of the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence, Vicki Colbert, Wise Education Laureate, and it goes on, um, many, many more. Uh, this is to emphasize that, you know, Think Equal is, is rooted and anchored in decades and centuries um, of research and understanding in this field. This isn't, you know, a completely new revelation that education is important and moral education and education for peace is needed. This is something that has come from the most uh, brilliant and enlightened forward thinking and um, wisdom in order to create the kind of tools to meet these goals of um, world peace and um, essentially create this missing gap in our current education system, which, which I mentioned to be alongside numeracy and literacy, the third dimension, which is social and emotional learning. This slide is to show you a little bit about where we are today. So we're in 20 countries and we've reached over 181,000 children. Our mission is 
for a system change um, and societal impact, which means that, of course, our implementation goals is to is to be in on, on a large scale. So some of these examples lie with the North Macedonia. Um, we have been embedded within the national curriculum of North Macedonia, meaning that every single five year old will have access to our program and our materials. Uh, the Eastern Cape of South Africa, right at the bottom there. Um, we are in the process of rolling out to every single five-year-old in the Eastern Cape. We've been asked by the Department of Education to um, give this to every five-year-old in the province. And now we're moving into Western Cape. So it's very, very exciting. And Mexico is another example in which we're in conversation with the World Bank to try and get this program to all the children in, in the three to six-year-old children in Mexico, because um, the, the projects that we've had going there have been incredibly successful. And so we've been asked to kind of continue there. I think, I think one of the most beautiful parts of personally for me about this program and when looking at, at a map like this is that our program is standardized. It's the same. And although looking at this world, world map, there have, you have countries that are completely geographically different, that are culturally different, politically different, it's the same skills, the same human skills of equality, of empathy, of mental health and well-being that's being universally offered to early years children. And these materials are, you know, saturated in diversity and representation um, so that we have situations where there are children in rural India, for example, that are reading our books and children in downtown LA, um, reading the same books, and they're both seeing themselves and each other through these stories. And I'll explain a little bit more when we look at the program, but um, this is really to give you a glimpse that the, the Think Equal uh, principles, similar to Montessori, is that every child is deserving of the same fundamental rights of growing up to be empathetic and equal and safe uh, humans in, in this world. So I, I just wanted to touch upon that. I don't believe I need to convince you of the importance of early learning. I'm sure you're already on the same page with me on that um, and would think equal, but this is just a glimpse into uh, essentially why we work with children from the ages of three to six. Um, although we very much believe that social justice and mental health and psych psychosocial skills should be within a child's whole educational experience and beyond as adults we should be working on these as well but it's the early years the years before the age of six which is really that gateway into uh, positive life outcomes after the age of six it gets a lot more difficult to kind of change these ideas and to really help kind of unlearn uh, behaviors and so really we are focusing on creating the foundations in the same way that a strong tree needs to have deep, stable and solid roots. Um, children really need to have those early years given the attention that they deserve. And I think that, again, in today's global climate, in the issues that we face all over the world, um, you know, social issues, it's we really need to start looking more preventatively at how we, we tackle these, um, how we tackle these discriminations and these mental ill health. And I think that that is the way forward um, to work on preventative methods and to move away from kind of sticking plasters over wounds that sometimes unfortunately are, are a bit too deep to heal completely. So this is just an, this is just an, uh, an explanation as to why we're three to six um, to focus on these foundation years. So I've given you a little bit of insight about our wider mission, how it links, you know, inherently with Montessori and these ideas of um, education and early years education being this kind of gateway into societal progress. Um, and now I've, I've, I know I've kind of touched on it a little bit, but I'm going to look a little bit more at our program itself, because one of the number one questions is what actually do you do then as, a, as an organization? And so I think it's important to look at this in a bit of detail. The Think Equal program covers 25 social competencies and skills for three to six year olds across a 30 week period. So all the research into SEL, and I'll keep, keep talking about this, but uh, the research shows you that um, high quality and impactful um, 
evidence-based early years programs shows that you have to teach things frequently, learn things frequently and have things be repeated in order to get this kind of holistic and long-term successful learning both for the individual and for wider society. So that's why it's across the 30 week period. And the purpose of this is to really ground these human beings in solid foundations and um, for positive life outcomes um, for the futures. I think that it's important that, you know, um, gender equality isn't just taught once, once a week, a year, um, and actually is kind of embedded within the child's learning experience throughout their, their education. And so that's why we have it as, as a program that spans across these, these 30 weeks. Um, again, we are based on the research, we based on what already is out there and exists and is hugely successful and impactful. Um, so we have many pedagogical influences and there are a few outlined here. Um, social development theory is pretty much what it says on the tin. Um, it rests on this idea that in order for us to be pro-social, then children have to learn in sociable settings and have to socialize with others. Um, and that's very much a part of Think Equal. And um, usually a lot of learning environments within a classroom is based on social development theory. We also have the theory of multiple intelligences from Howard Gardner. This really rests on the premise that children are all unique. We are all unique. And every child learns differently. Every child has their own um, understanding and perspective of, of what they, they wish to absorb and that knowledge they wish to absorb. Um, and so it's about trying to get as many variations of learning as possible. So there are seven here that Hal Gardner lists out and Think Equal meets all of them within our program. Um, and uh, yeah, incredibly, incredibly important. And then the final is Montessori, of course, um, which is really the pedagogy which has been fundamental in the making of the Think Equal program, with the core principle being that children should be viewed as the agents of social change. And in doing so, the learning therefore needs to be co-created between the child and the educator. It has to be experiential learning, it has to be role modeling, it has to be discussions. Um, this idea that you can kind of sit a child and tell them what to say, think and do is not going to be the kind of impactful education that is really going to be ingrained and, and help them lead successful lives. Um, so these these are the kind of influences that have created the Think Equal program and um, and the tools that we have have created. And while speaking of the tools, let's talk a little bit about what what the program involves. Um, it's a, it's a program for three to six year olds, but we've broken it down into three levels. We have the level one, which is three to four, level two, four to five, level three, five to six. And each level comprises of five hours of digital training, 24 narrative picture books, 90 lesson plans and 50 plus resources. And um, the lesson plans are really kind of guides to help teachers and educators um, discuss these 25 competencies and skills and discuss the kind of themes of the books. The 25 skills and competencies are within each level. It's not span across the, across the three. And again, through 30 weeks of term time, roughly 30 minute sessions, depending on your cohort of children and three sessions per week. Um, again, it's the, the way the program has been designed has been through what's worked in previous early childhood um, programs. And it's this repetition, it's this um, embedding of these skills within the week um, and also using narrative. These are all things that have shown huge success um, in previous in previous programs and therefore has informed us on, on the creation of Think Equal. Um, the, uh, these are some of our original narrative picture books. Um, each week is based off one of these books that um, enables these feelings of empathy to really be um, utilized. And each book teaches a series of those 25 skills and competencies that I show you. So me, myself and I teach a celebration of diversity and global citizenship and self-esteem. Diego's great idea looks at problem solving and inclusion um, and kindness. So we have all of these different books. Um, that teach the 25 skills and competencies. Then you have the lesson plan booklet that um, helps to guide these conversations and really helps to create these co collaborative conversations between educator and child to explore some of these themes. And then each session is supported by these best practice resources. Um, so in the top left, you have the um, ruler program, the uh, zones of regulation um, resource that is across all three levels. We have 
the family cards showing male carers um, as well as female carers. We have occupation cards that look at male and female doctors, scientists, um, artists, and all of the above. And then our Shades of Brown cards that really explores these idea, this idea of celebration of diversity um, and looks at human beings as all belonging to this one family um, in different shades of brown family. Um, so these are these are a few examples. Now, I said 24 books, it's a 30 week program, a book per week. That's because the remaining six weeks um, within each level has the best practice mindfulness program. So either the kindness curriculum, which I mentioned at the beginning or C learning, which is social, emotional and ethical learning. And those weeks don't have books assigned. These are about belly breathing and mindfulness and meditation and um, treating kindness as a skill. Um, and these amazing, amazing programs that's embedded within within the learning as well to really give this holistic, watertight um, education to to our early years children. Um, I've kind of mentioned the benefits of SEL throughout and also um, emphasised that this program is based off um, evidence and research. And um, I think this is things you probably already know, but it's just to emphasize that we are anchored in the science um, that has been going about for decades. We know that high quality SEL before the age of six has significant short term, but also long term impacts, obviously within kind of socialization, things like um, inclusion and empathy, but also in regards to maybe more surprisingly, physical health, you know, anxiety, stress and depression has huge impacts. It can be one of this most signifying and um, kind of warning signs of heart diseases. Um, and then you also have academic achievement, which is greatly tied with SEL and also economic prosperity, both for the individual child and, um, you know, higher likelihood of getting a, a better paid job or having a higher finishing higher education. But also it shows that within a community, the, the economic prosperity increases. So the benefits really are very vast. And, and, you know, education isn't just education, education informs the kind of whole foundations of society's progress. And this is really to show that this isn't an add on, this isn't something that, you know, only helps with, with certain aspects of society, this is really something that that will transcend beyond the kind of the box of, of education and, and early years. I uh, think Equal itself has also had two in-depth evaluations to measure impact and effectiveness. So this one was from um, Botswana, where we had Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence do a study which found that children exposed to Think Equal were more socially and emotionally skilled and less likely to be anxious, angry, aggressive and withdrawn than their peers who did not have access to Think Equal. So this was an extremely significant study. It was the first one that we had um, conducted in Botswana. And then more recently, we had um, an RCT in Australia, also led by Yale, but along with Federation University, which found equally significant results in the children that were evaluated. Um, it was, you know, as expected, but the children who had kind of greater deficits, poorer baseline scores benefited the most um, from the Think Equal program. And actually, very recently, um, Beyond Blue, which is a, a government kind of directory that, that um, signposts teachers and educators to different programs, they recently evaluated Think Equal and gave us top marks um, in all categories. So we're very pleased about that. And um, this kind of comes back to my what I was saying about the map, the world, the world map, and how you know Botswana and Australia are very different, you know, cultural, geographical places in the world, but the results are the same because children across the world from all backgrounds have the same, you know, impacts on SEL, and it's something that you know is universal. It's a universal right for the child, and it's going to have universal impacts as well. And um, so that's to highlight that there. Um, the impact of the program kind of, I could speak about it for a while, but there's um, real power, I believe, in looking and listening to responses from educators. So I'm very happy to send you um, a list of these quotes from educators. Um, 
from around the world, but um, we have uh, one in the USA looking at using Think Equal within their curriculum with their kindergarten students and um, the engaging lessons and, and the creativity of the lessons as well. We have South Africa, Eastern Cape. Um, every teacher obviously has a different, every educator has a different method of teaching, has different children in there. Their cohort has, has different priorities that they're trying to balance and juggle. And I think the real takeaway here is that the program is, is meant to be used and has been designed as a tool to help and support educators in teaching these competencies and skills that otherwise can be pretty challenging and um vast to teach and so every teacher has a different experience with it the lesson plans act as a guide to help um to help direct the the, the educator but the results are, are really overwhelmingly positive um this one is is one from the uk and it's one that i think is is important because it looks specifically at the need for it now in today's climate in a post-covid world well touch wood post-COVID, as we emerge from COVID, um, you know, the, the development, the social emotional development in children is, is pretty worrying. And it's a huge ask for teachers to have to kind of navigate this on top of everything else. Um, and so again, this program has been designed to help fill a gap, um, help connect the, the bridge between intentions and objectives with you know, practical lessons within a classroom. Um, and that's what this teacher here in, in Tower Hamlets in the UK found, that actually this is needed. It's always been needed, but it's now more than ever when children are needing that extra confidence, that extra mental health boost um, to kind of fit in with the work that, that teachers and schools around the world are continuously trying to reach. And then here is some from India, but um, I'm happy to send these to you if you'd like to have a closer look, they're really, really beautiful. Now, although Think Equal is fundamentally a uh, classroom based program, we believe that education and creating a program for the classroom is the best way to kind of interject and, and build preventative um, foundations and pro social foundations within children. Um, when we speak of education, the term education is really broad. And as you all know, it can come from, from many different directions and it can, can exist in many different forms. And I think a really important educator um, that Think Equal has, has integrated within its program and that we've recognized is, of course, the parent. <laughs> the parent is, is one of the key mentors in a child's life, um, a guardian, carer, parent, uh, families. And so, especially during COVID in which, you know, mental health was um, becoming a, a pretty big crisis. It was being seen as the kind of, uh, secondary pandemic to follow coronavirus um, and has really just ex ex has really shown exaggerated and deepened the kind of crisis that we were already facing it's kind of now needed to help parents help families with provide by providing the tools um, to help our youngest cope this is where we've created a home kit called eculicious now it's based off the classroom program, so it has the same um, books, the same competencies and skills, but it's been specifically adapted for uh, families. Um, this is a subscription pack and it contains 12 books with um, animations of each of our books. And these animations have been voiced by very famous actors, including Lydia Coleman, Emma Thompson, David Oyolowo, Stephen Fry, Chimamanda Adichie, um, Susan Sarandon and, and, and many more and each animation each book comes with accompanying activities and resources for parents to, to do with their children in a different way than um, in the classroom program we have kind of these 30 minute sessions for this we have um, five 10 minute activities for families to enjoy together so um, all together there's 60 um, and these further help embed these critical skills and competencies it's a way to engage parents alongside the child's learning which i believe is a, is a real um, focus point for a lot of schools at the moment is to try and get that engagement because it makes it a lot easier on on the staff and on the educators um, but it's also a nice way for the parents to be involved in their children's learning of this and um, think equal subject um, obviously it, it says here it's 69 dollars for the subscription um, 
And what that does is it donates the Think Equal Classroom program to five children in either South Africa, India or Mexico. Obviously, we're a not for profit. This isn't anything to do with um, this isn't anything to do with money. This is about donations into our program um, in South Africa, India and Mexico. But the families can also receive these 12 animations and activities with the resources. Um, I don't know if we have time. I can quickly sh show you the trailer. I'm just checking my time. Um, yes, if, see if this will work and let me know if this, the sound is weird. Um, but hopefully this will, this will work. <laughs> My legacy is how my children fare in the world, whether they're happy, productive, conscientious people. program is fantastic. I think everybody should support it. I encourage governments and parents to support it because I think it's going to move us forward. And that kind of concludes um, the, oops. Um, that kind of concludes the the program, the presentation that I had uh, planned for you today. It's given you a little whirlwind tour of the origins of Think Equal and the the kind of mission, the way in which Montessori has really influenced, along with other kind of mega thought leaders in the fields of education, human rights and activism, um, along with what our program actually entails and what our intentions are to bridge that gap between objectives and tensions with kind of the practical tools in which to help um, implement this within a classroom setting. And as well shown how we are moving as well towards a, a kind of well-rounded education of the child's experience, which is including the families and the parents as well. Um, I'm of course extremely happy to um, share my email and if anyone you know is interested or has any questions then of course um, please do but I think we have some time now I think that was record timing for me <laughs> to um, ask and answer any questions that you might have or any any slides that you wished for me to to go back and, and expand on a little bit more then yeah just let me know. If you would like to raise your hand either virtually or physically, and then we can call on you, or you can also put a question in the chat. It was a lot of information to take in. Yes, Heidi, please unmute yourself and you have the floor. Hi, it's Heidi and Suzanne. <laughs> I was going to make Suzanne say something after I raised her hand, my hand, but then <laughs> she would have smacked me for putting her on the spot. Uh, thank you, Sasha, very much for that. Um, I just had a quick look on the website whilst you were talking to try and orientate myself. So if I was interested for my school, how would I go about finding more information in terms of registering or finding the, the resources? Yeah, sure. That's a, a good, a very good question. Um, I think that the, the best you can either email me from my email there and um, there should be a form that's online. We're currently in the process of um, creating a way in which it's all automated through our website. Um, it's kind of a shift as we've expanded this past year. Um, we used to kind of work very much as a kind of project based um, organization. And now it's so brilliant because we have um, have a lot of individual schools and and wanting to be kind of be interested in the program uh, um, and so we're trying to automate it all but it's in the process and um, then there should be a form on the website um, if you look at the resources and scroll down to kind of fill out how many sets you want and um, which levels you would like um, with the kind of age groups there but I'm very happy for you to email me and I'd be more than happy to um, to 
speak to you more about it or if you're interested in audio then going through with that yeah thank you i'm glad you like it you're thank you very much and perhaps to add to that, Sasha, that um, there is also an online training available for the teachers who wish to deliver the program. So you not only get the packs, but you also get some input on how to share it with children. And probably uh, what may be a challenge for some Montessori is that it is very much driven mm. by a specific mm. program. Mm. But uh, it is my belief that once you have done the training, if you are an experienced teacher, you can actually dip in and out of the books um, and combine it with perhaps bigger schemes of work that you are producing in the school so um, okay. um, I think absolutely. That, yeah yeah absolutely I think it's um really key to emphasize that the um the nature of the program which is standardized and which has all the resources kind of packaged and ready to go is really there to kind of guide um and by no means is it part of the think equal um idea and I know very much so with Montessori that you know you kind of read this almost like a script to um kind of follow this out but it's there as to use as much as you would like um or as little depending on your kind of confidence in that specific lesson or, or with that book but yes we have our five hour digital training which um I know I'm biased but I really like it <laughs> and um yeah, Barbara speaks in this um, as well. And we have the kind of the origins of Think Equal, which I think is incredibly fascinating. It comes from a very, um, a very specific and interesting lens of um, human rights and activism um, from our founder, Leslie Udwin, who has a brilliant and amazing and, and impassioned story. And then it goes through into the neuroscience in more depth. It goes through into the importance of narrative um, the use of positive language, um, what our core values are, and then how to actually utilize what you're given in the pack of materials within a classroom setting, um, as well as looking at, you know, what, what challenges you might have, um, what, what to do if, if children, you know, aren't engaging with it. It's, it's, it's really there. And you can go back throughout the school year, you know, once you've logged in, that's it, it's yours. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's there to help kind of help you navigate the program in, in more depth. Um, but yeah, that's on the website too, and you can you can register there with the manual. Wendy, yeah. Hello, Sasha. I um, really enjoyed the talk. I've heard Leslie several times, and I'm totally blown away by the whole thing. Um, it's this is just an interesting thing, and I'm, perhaps I wasn't concentrating enough. But on your map, were you working in Australia? Yes. Ah, uh, because I didn't see that. And then I saw one of the research programs were in Australia. And I thought, that's strange, because I didn't no. see it. So obviously, I wasn't attending enough. So sorry. <laughs> no, um, I'll definitely check that, because these are things that maybe have slipped through the cracks. But no, we're definitely in Australia. We have um, lots of programs in Australia. And that's, yeah, you're right. That's where one of our research um programs are and it, it's kind of kicking off there so I'll definitely double check that it's on the map <laughs> because um, it's one of our 20. thank you <laughs> no worries thank you for being interested in the program and yeah Leslie's an amazing speaker <laughs> you've probably heard her before um, maybe I can add a little bit more uh, on the delivery of the program because it's story based and it makes suggestions of activities that can follow up for the children. You could almost set up activities in the creative area for the children to do and quite spontaneously in order to be able to monitor how the children take in the information about the story so you can monitor their reactions. Um, um, I have certainly tested some of the stories with my grandchildren and um, um, I, me and myself remains to be f absolutely favorite with both of them because of the, it gives the child the feeling that they are powerful. And it's interesting that it suits both five-year-old and a three-year-old in equal measure. So there is, um, there's a lot of food for thought in the books, even if you just 
use the books as a springboard for discussion with your children or springboard for the older children. It could be easily be used with elementary, kind of early elementary children as an opportunity to give them a platform to have a voice to express their own ideas. Yeah, absolutely. And there's been a lot of a lot of cases where teachers have kind of come up to us and said, do you do this for older kids? Because I feel like this could be repeated. Um, and like I said, this is something that, sh you know, the learning should not stop age six, it should continue. Um, it's just what we focus on. But a lot of the materials are used throughout um, throughout schools. It kind of there's a big emphasis um, in the UK specifically, but I know in a lot of other countries to kind of have this whole school approach to social emotional learning. Um, this is something that should be embedded within um, the framework of, of education. You know, like I said, gender equality once a week for a year is not going to really truly create gender equality. It's about using that. And like Barbara said, the books very much on their own do instill these these qualities and you have you know male role models that are looking after the children and you have you know mothers who are going out to work and it's all about representation diversity and um, and not just simply in in kind of physical diversity which is incredibly important but in you know diversity of opinions and ideas and um religions etc so the books itself are really the kind of the gold dust, the magic ingredient that, that ties it all together. Um, and yeah, it's they have been repeated throughout the school. And same with the resources. We have the, the mood meter, the zones of regulation, which uh, is probably the, 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 the tool that is used and, and reported back to me as, uh, as I speak to a lot of teachers and, and a lot of schools as something that is it is really mind blowing because the, there's children age three that are able to name their emotion and you know plot themselves as a color. It's no such thing as a good or a bad emotion. It's about just different levels of energy and pleasantness, um, and it's something that you know teachers and parents ha have commented on and that they use throughout the whole school. You know, um, older children using this as well. And actually, there was a few cases of staff rooms having them up <laughs> in the staff room, the zones of regulation and the mood meter. Um, so yeah, it's it's definitely it, it's it's definitely needs to be contextualized within your school setting. Um, I mentioned that we're standardized, and there's a reason for that, which is that you know it's it shouldn't differ depending on wh where the child lives, on what kind of skills or, or education that they have. But that being said, every country and every classroom it has it is different and has different children and different needs, and we very much believe on that idea that every child is unique to adapt and um, kind of mold that into what the what's best for your your current situation um, like Barbara said using the materials as you see fit. Elena would you like to say yeah I have a I have a question I would like to ask I'm uh, I'm also very intrigued by this I think it's wonderful it's uh, yeah it's beautiful <laughs> absolutely um, I am based in France. I, is the material translated into which languages? Yeah, that's a again a good question. That is where we do um, we do alter the materials for that reason for the translations, of course. And um, yeah, we have them in French. I would need to check. I don't think we currently have a project in France, so I would need to check about the status of the translations, but I 100% know we have them. Um, we have a program officer who's French and she's been looking at all the materials, um, but we have them in, in, in I think, 18 languages. Um, it's really important, um, rightly so, from governments that we work with that we include all communities um, even within a country for example in South Africa we have um, Isikosa and we're currently translating into Afrikaans and Sesotho and hopefully soon into Setswana as well um, and Isizulu so it's, it's about reaching reaching uh, as many children in their native languages as possible and French we, we definitely do have um, and we do adapt adapt to. Do you have it in Danish as well? I'll need to check on that. Let me write that down. I, I don't think we do. Um, I haven't seen it anywhere, no. Hmm. 
No, I don't think we do, but I can definitely check. And it's something that we're constantly working on. Um, we have lots of languages that it kind of in the pipeline and it is a bit of a process, but it's something that we're very, um, we very much prioritize. Um, but I'll, I'll check with that, with, I'll check with, with Danish. Again, I, I think we have a project um, that would mean it, it to, be, to be in Danish, but sometimes we do have these, these additional languages. So I'll check for you. Lovely, thank you. And thank yes. you. And Del wanted to know if it's available in Turkish. It's probably the same as the Danish story. I think it's the same. I'll, um, I'm writing these down because it's there's there's a lot of different and, and because there's a lot of languages, a lot of the time they're at different stages. So there are some that you know ready to print, ready to go. We have some that's translated but needs to be typeset because we have a, a wonderful um, staff member who does all the typesetting and makes it look all beautiful for all the books um, and that usually happens when there's a <laughs> Norwegian <laughs> I think that's the same um, it usually happens when we have projects that 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 come out because that that it takes a, a, a bit of a chunk of time and so the projects are, are usually prioritized on a kind of wider scale but I, I'm definitely going to check these um, and I mean, the, the dream, the thing equal dream is every language in the world um, and every classroom in the world. So we're, we're working towards it. If it's, not, if it's not in Norwegian yet, it will be, I'm sure, um, not too long. But yeah. Maybe, um, Sasha, what you could do is um, send us a list of all the languages in which it's been translated, and then we can post it on um, the Montessori Europe website and share it with all of the people who are here today and all those that have registered for the webinar. Absolutely. That's, That's perfect. Like, uh, yeah, absolutely. I'll send that. That's a great. I just wanted to confirm that you have full support of Waterpark Montessori. I represent Waterpark Montessori. I will put information about the whole program on our student notice board. Uh, I'm really impressed. I will recommend it to everybody. That's why I also asked for Norwegian. We have a, a main market in, in Norway, uh, and I'm sure there will be students um, interested in, in, in this program, but also in English. It's doable in, in English, I think. Um, so no problem. Not a, you know, no problem that it's not in Norwegian. That's what I want to say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh, that's amazing. Thank you so much for, uh, for sharing that and that you're enjoying it. It's really, um, it, you know, I could talk about it all day. I really, truly believe it with the, every fiber of my being. I believe that this is the way and that teachers are honestly the the lifeline of um, <laughs> of society. But hearing it from from schools and settings and teachers who have actually tried the materials and, and you know, know what it's about. is really it is really, really, really brilliant. We love hearing it. <laughs> so thank you. Well, I think if there are no more questions, we will say thank you so much, Sasha. It was a super reflection on what Think Equal has to offer. We very much appreciate your time putting it together and sharing it with us. And I am sure that um, you will um, get some responses by email or perhaps um, in people looking at your website. So. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And thank you, everyone, for spending your time listening to me. I think I spoke very fast. <laughs> I don't think I've ever done a Think Evil presentation in record timing. But um, yeah, I I'm very much appreciate, appreciate it all. And again, it's because of you and teachers that are you know, enabling this kind of positive change and this move towards peace and equality and, and you know, a safe, free and equal world. So I really appreciate all of you. and. Um, feel free to email me i don't know if montessori you'll be sending um, so my email around or whether i put it here remember it's at the end of your presentation so, yeah and it has been recorded so it will be part of sure. that but if you would of like course. Gwendolyn to include it in the email um that she will send with the recording we can also ask her to do that sure okay perfect thank perfect you. well thank you thank you everyone Very have a lovely indeed. week thank you everyone have a good Easter. We'll see you at the end of April. We are taking a tiny little break. We need to regenerate good. energies. <laughs> Unless you are interested yes. in adolescent programs, in which case we are meeting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sasha. Perfect.
Bye. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye.